recording in progress. Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome to VSPG, the last one of the year before we go on break until after the new year. Andre and I have been uh, working on the schedule for after the new year. So you can pretty soon we'll post that um, on the website. So keep an eye out on that. Uh, I'll send a probably in an email at the beginning of the year to tell everybody that it's posted. Uh, but today we have a presentation by Monica Hielbron. Uh The uh, title is the Southern, Southern Segment of the Proterozoic Minas Bahia Origin Southeast Brazil, an example of complete orogenic cycle. So Andre, could you please go ahead and introduce uh, Monica for us? Yeah, it's a great pleasure to in introduce Monica Helbron. Uh, we met about 17 years ago when I was on a co for conference and field trip in Minas and Bahia. Uh, Monica is originally from Rio de Janeiro. She did her undergraduate and master degree at the University of Rio de Janeiro. And uh, she followed with PhD at the University of Sao Paulo. Uh, after it, she uh, had uh, various uh, appointment and uh, short visits in uh, in Australia, in the University of Alberta, in Canada. She did a postdoc at uh, in Quebec, uh, I guess problem with uh, Machado, maybe, okay. yeah, uh, and uh, her field is. Uh, uh, sort of tectonics, uh, structural geology, evolution of sedimentary basins, and she particularly focused on uh, uh, Minas Bahia origin, which is in uh, southern part of uh, San Francisco Craton, and that's the topic she will talk today. And I should mention that she edited and a book that was uh, well, six years or something ago, published on uh, polyproterozoic origins of South Francisco uh, Craton. So um, she also lead various uh, uh, large groups in Brazil, like Institute de Geoatlantica, Texas, and other uh, in uh, large groups working on tectonics and polyproterozoic tectonics. And she is a member of uh, Brazilian Academy of Sciences. So with this, it's a pleasure to pass to Monica. Thank you so much for the invitation. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to meet you again, even if it's online. And it will be a pleasure also to, to share the, this new data that is popping out in the country. So now we have many labs, many geochronological labs in the country. And really data is appearing like crazy. And so sometimes it's difficult uh, to, to digest all the data. So this is a work with many hands. So I put here some of the people that are working on this paleoproterozoic evolution in the southern part of the Minas Bahia uh, orogenic belt. So thank you again. And it will be a pleasure to share with you our, our new data, OK? So this is an overview of the presentation. I'm going to show you the Brazil and the other paleoproterozoic rocks very fast. And then I'm going to tell about tectonic organization in Brazil that is quite different because our cratons are new proterozoic. So it's something different from the, what you used to work and call cratons in the other parts of the world. Then I'm going to move to the paleoproterozoic Minas Bahia erosion that is a huge uh, paleoproterozoic orogenic system, and then move to the focus of the presentation, that is the southern part of the Minas Bahia uh, orogen. Then I'm going to talk about the different pieces, tectonic terrains that make up uh, this belt. And at the end, uh, something about post-collisional bimodal magmatism. There is something that we are still uh, working on. Uh, some new half new NLG new data, and then some insights about what's, what's next, what we, we should go in, 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 in what that direction we should move. So first of all, this is a, an old map, but you can see the, 
that we have some paleoproterozoic stuff in the country. And uh, let me say that our paleoproterozoic rocks uh, pieces are larger than shown in this map. But this is because, as I said before, just now from the last 10 years, we are getting more and more uh, precise geochronological data. When you move to South America, it's very interesting. On the left, you can see the, the new tectonic map of the country. And if you remove the green and yellow stuff that is Phenerozoic cover, we, we, we have a red stuff that is the oldest rocks, let me say Paleoproterozoic and Archean rocks. And then the, the sea, this blue sea, there is the new, new Proterozoic belts of the country. What is really amazing in South America is that we have, let me say, two different as, uh, uh, parts of Brazil. So the northern part, that is the Amazon Craton, it's, it's kind of more similar to Laurentia. So they, they have a Mesoproterozoic rocks and the Greenvillian orogenes. When you move to the Eastern Brazil, it's completely different. What we have is some uh, pieces of old cratons, Paleoproterozoic and Archean rocks, surrounded by this network of, now it's green, this uh, new Proterozoic belts. And if you want to understand better, not, not the size of the cratons that are new Proterozoic, but the Paleo continent, you should go to the belts also. And you should get the reworked basement rocks inside, inside the new Proterozoic belts in Brazil. Uh, just to show you some, some uh, ages. So we have some Paleoproterozoic ages in Amazon Craton, uh, mostly Riassian to Orozinian. And then we have uh, lots of different tectonic blocks with also some Riassian to Orozinian ages in the Eastern Brazil, let me say. And then I'm going to move to the focus of the presentation that is this big block that of course connect to Africa uh, because this cratonic bridge was just cut during the, the breakup of the uh, Atlantic Ocean. So the Minas Bahia or orogenic belt, we, we call this MBO, it's, uh, its concept evolved through time. Why? Because we have nice outcrops in the south of San Francisco Craton, very nice outcrops at Bahia State at the northern part of San Francisco Craton and some in layers in between the new Proterozoic belts. And just about maybe five or six years ago, we realized that we are talking about the same orogenic belt and we started to trying to make some correlations. And the first uh, uh, people that use this name, Minas Bahia, was uh, Teixeira and Alchemin and Nossi who realized that we really have a huge orogenic belt uh, with paleoproterozoic belts uh, connecting older Archean stuff in between, okay? So this is the concept of the Minas Bahia orogenic belt. So now I'm going to move to the southern part that at the beginning, people just study paleoproterozoic rocks in the craton. Why? Because it's easy. Because the, the new proterozoic metamorphic overprint which is, let me say, green cheese faces. When you move to the south, we started to work a lot and we reached some granite faces in the, in the close to, to Rio de Janeiro city. I can move. Is it not uh, okay, changing? Okay, okay. Now, now, it, now it's going. And Great. so, let, let, let me talk about these two concepts with you. So in red, we have the, the present shape of the San Francisco Craton. That is what is preserved from the new Proterozoic overprint. And by connecting uh, basement rocks that are inside the belts, the new Proterozoic belts, we started to expand what was probably uh, the, the real size of the San Francisco Paleo continent. So this is really different because we use this cratonic con new proterozoic cratonic concept in Brazil. Why? Because the new proterozoic is really important in our country. And so what we did, we connect uh, this, the studies of that are close to the kraton 
but we get into the new proterozoic belt and try to retrieve the information about this paleo proterozoic units. Okay, so I'm going to talk about this region here, the southern here region of the Minas Bahia orogenic belt. These are some old maps uh, and since the beginning, people realized that part of the Paleoproterozoic belt was inside the, the new Proterozoic uh, Ribera belt. And there are different concepts about the, the tectonic units, uh, including this one of alchemy. Uh, at that time, he, he also includes some microcontinent here, some Archean microcontinent. And then this is why, uh, this is now what we think about this belt, okay? So uh, first of all, in this top inset here, you can see the limits of the San Francisco Praetor. So you can see that part of the belt is inside the autochthonous domain of the new Proterozoic belt, but part of the Paleoproterozoic units are, are severely uh, involved in the new Proterozoic tectonics. So co uh, coming from north to south, we have different terrains. So we have the Archi in San Francisco, a uh, kratom, let me say, or a paleo continent with a paleo proterozoic passive margin that is the Minas supergroup in the iron quadrangle. And then we, 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 have a, we have a suture here. And then we have the, a kind of accretionary to continental uh, magmatic arc, paleo proterozoic, that is the Mineiro arc system. Then we, we have a microcontinent recently discovered by Henrique Bruno in his PhD thesis. There is a, an Archean block uh, in between two magmatic arcs, the Mineiro magmatic arc and what we call now Mantiqueira and Jusifora magmatic arc. You can see by the map, the, the shape of the uh, Paleoproterozoic units. So here we have, we can map plutons, different plutons, different basins, but here it's, it's everything is quite uh, imbricated because of this new proterozoic tectonics. So I'm going to show you from north to south all this tectonic terrain. So we'll start with the passive margin, Minas supergroup. Then I'm going to move to Mineiro. Then I'm going to move to this microcontinent, Archean microcontinent. And then I'm going to move to this external arc system. Quite complicated because they are separated by an important shear, uh, new proterozoic shear zones, okay? Let's move. So the passive margin of, of the San Francisco Kraton or Paleo continent, it's, it's, uh, it crops out quite well in the Iron Quadrigal. It's a very important mining area in the country, not only for gold, but for iron formation. And this is a column of the Mina supergroup that is the passive margin. And Alchemin and Martin Neto, they realize that part of the Colbina supergroup, in fact, should be divided in two groups. So one, one the lower group, it's a rift to passive margin sequence uh, to the Archean microcontinent. And the top units, in fact, are active margin units. And they are related with the collision of these orogenic parts of the Paleoproterozoic belt. So I'm going to show some slides of this stratigraphy, just to, to look to, to some rocks, okay? So then we have the rift system that is made by conglomerates and quartzites that are fluvial to shallow marine. Then we move to our banded eye formation, the Tabirit, that of course it's very important for iron mining in the country. Then moving to the top, we have some carbonate, cut carbonates, and they, have, they are stromatolytic, very beautiful. And then moving more to the top, we are going to shallow to more deep marine stuff. So we have uh, some quartzites and pelitic material. We, have, we still have some stromatolites, some tubular stromatolites in these top units, and also some homokies showing the deepening of the passive margin, okay? So now we are reaching this top part of the Minas supergroup. Uh, the active margin, uh, let me say, so after orogenesis, orogenesis is something between 2.1 and 2.05 giga years. It depends because the, the, the college of this tectonic terrains, uh, it was diachronic. So it started at 2.1 
and, and ends at, let me say, 2.05 giga years to the external terrains of the belt. And so then you move to conglomerates, dynamic tides, and, and uh, fluvial stuff that made up the, the top units, the active margin uh, units of the MENA supergroup. And of course, these uh, top units, they were deposited during inversion, during collision, uh, paleoproterozoic collisional episodes, okay? So just to, a quick look, because I don't have time to get into detail, but what's important is that in the, in the basal units, you have provenance coming from the kraton, the Archean kraton, and when you move to the foreland stuff, you started to get younger zir zircons with the ages of the arcs and thin collision of granitoids. This is the same, uh, a more recent work uh, from uh, Gonçalves and Hulai. It's inverted, so here we have the rift, the passive margin state, and when you move to the foreland, you started to get to sample all the orogenic rocks of the belt, okay? And so it's clearly a passive margin sequence that got some foreland material during the collision of the Mineiro arc through the, the San Francisco crater. So let's move to the second unit. There is the Mineiro arc system. It started at Mineiro belt, but then the, we realized that it's not really a belt, it's a terrain with many different uh, stages, magmatic arc stages. Uh, some very interesting because some old stages are exactly in the magmatic loo. So they are sidereal magmatic arcs. So the older, the oldest stages are 2.4. Uh, then we have 2.3 rocks. And then we have the huge component of the arc that's Ryassian from 2.24 to 2.20 giga years. And then the latest stage of the arc where you have more co a continental uh, tectonic environment with more crustal, crustal components and uh, with mixing uh, between metal and crustal rocks. Let's take a look on, on this different magmatic arc states. Uh, we, we think that maybe they represent uh, flare-ups in this uh, magmatic arc system. So the oldest one is 2.4, they are the Samukitoids. There's a quite nice work of Moreira, Seixas, and Barbosa. So they got this very uh, 2.4 giga year rocks. And what is important is that we have Sanukitoid rocks popping out in this interval. And since 2.4, we, we start to producing not only TTGs, but also Sanukitoid rocks in this magmatic arc system. Then we move to the most important part of our related rocks production, that is the Ryassian. So we have many tonalites, diorites, very interesting accumulates, oniblendite accumulates, and uh, ages are in between 2.24 to 2.21 giga years. This huge uh, contribution of the arc is related or to, also to volcanic rocks. It's quite interesting because in the north, we are, we are in a very lower crustal position. So you can see the volcanic contribution. And so we have andesites, we have dacites, and they're dating, they are dated, and they have the same age of the plutonic rocks of the arc. Uh, let, me, let me talk something. In, in between this green stuff are the, at that time they call this greenstone belt because they have mafic, ultramafic material and then uh, we realized that we are talking about arc or back arc, intra arc or back arc rocks because all this stuff is not Archean, but it's paleoproterozoic also, coeval with the uh, magmatic arc generation. So we have plutonic stuff, we have volcanic stuff, and we have mafic, ultramafic material in the back arc setting of this uh, younger, uh, older magmatic arc system. Then we move to the younger, youngest arc episodes. It's quite different. You, you started to get more crustal rocks, but you have you still have some tonalitic material, and it's very, quite common to see mingling and other very cool uh, uh, structures. Okay. Uh, some people, uh, we, uh, Wilson Teixeira did some 
uh, they try to work on on this material, uh, including the, the the conglomerates and some carbonaceous rich uh, metapil uh, metapilites, and they they realize that of course San Francisco Craton is the main uh, uh, that was the main source for the passive margin. It's not the main source for the basins inside the mineral arc system. So the, the rocks of the arc are the main source for this uh, metasedimentary sequences. So it's quite a juvenile scenario, at least at the beginning, at least from Sidarian to the uh, Ryassian. At the end, at the end where, where the continental masses are close together, maybe you started to get some intervening Archean blocks that could have could get some some detrital zircons to these basins also. Uh, when you move, the, I, I was talking mainly about this area, and you can see beautiful primary igneous textures. But when you move out of the kraton, again, this is the red line of the kraton. You started to see that these beautiful igneous rocks are transformed to banded gneisses. Very complicated to understand. Uh, all outcrops, you have three, four different types of rocks, and it's quite clear the, the green schist faces to lower amphibolite faces metamorphic overprint. And this overprint is Brazilian, okay? It's new proterozoic. Uh, again, so we have the same sanukitoids even outside of the cradle, uh, 2.1 giga year sanukitoids, and we started to get more and more sanukitoids not only in the Minero belt, the Minero arc system, but you're gonna see ahead in the other magmatic system also. And so this is quite important because uh, we don't have only TTGs, but also Sanukitoids and normal calcalkaline rocks. So, so we have the, the, the signature of a modern arc, in fact, uh, uh, printed in this uh, arc system, okay? Then I'm going to move, so I talk about the uh, Passive margin here. Then I'm talk about uh, uh, I talk I talked about the Minero magmatic arc system, and then I'm going to talk about this microcontinent. Okay, there is in between two magmatic arc system, the Minero and the the Machiquerins Rosifora that I'm going to talk ahead. Okay, so this is uh, what the Archean rocks look looks like. Some some of the rocks are in granulite faces, so they have orthopyroxene, but they are banded gneisses also with mafic rocks inside. And it's very interesting because even talking about Archean rocks, we keep going with sanuktoids. So it's a kind of curse, a curse of the sanuktoids. So you have lots of sanuktoids of Archean ages. And this is a, a bit more complicated sample because we have uh, the record of a 2.05 granulite facious metamorphic overprint. And this is quite uh, very important for us because we, we realize that we are working in the future between this Archean block and the other magmatic arc that uh, crops out to the east. And so this future zone is marked, let me move uh, ahead here. It's marked by this uh, black stuff here there are these granulite facies, 2.05 metamorphic overprint uh, onto uh, Archean rocks, okay? And so then we realize, okay, so we are dealing with the paleoproterozoic suture zone. And this was quite a surprise because we are at the middle of the new proterozoic belt. And we think that maybe because these rocks are dry, so they keep, uh, they keep the paleoproterozoic granulite facies record and didn't open during the Braziliano, and uh, let me say here, the Braziliano metamorphic over, overprint is onto amphibolite, lower amphibolite facies. So it's, it was quite something new for us. Uh, these are the mafic rocks included in this Archean stuff. Then I'm going to show you that all of these mafic rocks are youngest, younger, very young, uh, comparing to the, to the uh, Archean data, and they are in fact paleoproterozoic 2.05, 2.08 giga years. And now we are working on this post collision magmatism. And we think that these 
possibly is related to the slab detachment and closure of this orogenic system. So then move to the, to the external magmatic arc system that we call two strange names, Machiqueira and Jusifor arc system. At the beginning, we thought that we are dealing with two different magmatic arcs because with few data, they look quite different. But then uh, as more and more data is popping out, we just realized that uh, this difference between these two segments of this arc system, it's just new proterozoic. So we have banded uh, amphibolite facies orthogonized here, and here we have granulite facies orthogonized. But this uh, metamorphic overprint is Brasiliano. And uh, as soon as we're getting more data, we realize that they are not so different. And so we are starting to merge these uh, two arc segments together. Let's move to them. So this is the Manchiqueira rocks. They are banded genesis, uh, always with ornament, migmatitic. We have some porphyritic stuff also. Uh, we keep going with some nucleotides and TTG and some hybrid granitoids. And the ages are, uh, let me say, the, the major episode of uh, arc generation inside this part of the arc is around 2.617 to 2.12, let me say, giga years. But here is the difference, okay? All the data is discordant, highly discordant and going to the lower intercept that is Brasiliano, okay? New proterozoic in age, okay? Why? Because here we, we have a uh, amphibolite facies metamorphic overprint onto this uh, Ryassian rocks. Uh, the Jusifora, as I said before, is this purple stuff here. Uh, the shape of the units, it's quite imbricated, you can see, because, because you have the huge core of the tectonic of the new proterozoic belt here. So you interleaved basement rocks in purple with new proterozoic passive margin. And it's really difficult to map. You have to map in detail to understand uh, better this segment of the arc, let me say. So this is the map, just to show you two areas that we have mapping in detail. These are two PAG, PAG theses. One is from Lucas Araújo, that is now in, in Australia. And the other one is from Hazek Almeida, that is a professor here now. And just to show you the imbrication of the, the paleoproterozoic rocks with, with, uh, with the new proterozoic uh, passive margin units and also with new proterozoic granitoids. So working in this part of the paleoproterozoic is really difficult. So you have to understand first the new proterozoic remove the new proterozoic to get into the paleoproterozoic history. And these are the rocks, okay? The, the same uh, tonalites, diorites, uh, but they are in granulite facies, so it's not easy to, to understand these rocks. It's all green all the time. And it's, it's clear that the, the hyperstein uh, and sometimes CPX are metamorphic. So we are dealing with old, uh, old autogenesis that uh, underwent uh, granulite facies metamorphism during the new proterozoic. Again, uh, we have more data, more, lots of geochemical data of this part of the arc. So it's an expanded sequence, it's magnesium rocks, but yeah, and again, we keep going with TTG and sanukitoids and also some hybrid uh, granitoids, some crustal granitoids. And now we are putting this in time to better uh, tell the history of this part of the Jujifora uh, Machiqueira magmatic art system. Some ages. So the oldest one is 2.4 giga years. There's uh, another oldest Sidarian age of an island from 2010. And so the same, uh, so it, it started in the Sidarian. And it's quite interesting because some of the uh, Ryassian uh, orthogenesis, they have inheritance and uh, we have inheritance in this interval, okay? In, exactly in 2.4 and 2.3 giga years. Uh, in, let me say in the magmatic loop, but we are keep going with, in generating 
magnetic arcs during the, the, this whole period, okay? And again, all the data is discordant and you go through the Brazilian lower intercept because here the, the metamorphic phases of the new Proterozoic is granulite phases. So it's about 800 degrees in temperature. So it's it's we have even we have a uh, new proterozoic uh, zircons also growing in this big magnetic organisms. Some uh, now we are moving to a bit to the north of this this uh, magnetic external magnetic art system, and again we get plenty of sanukitoid rocks. This is a PEG thesis, uh, ongoing thesis of Sandro Mauri, and he's gotten again Ryassian ages and lots of again sanukitoid rocks together with some TTG and normal calcalkaline uh, rocks. Uh, well, closing the terrain, so we move from the passive margin, then we go to the Minero magmatic arc, then we go to the Piedade micro Archean microcontinent, then to the external arc. And then we started to realize that we, are, we, we have lots of different late to post collision magmatic rocks. They are uh, paraluminous granitoids, they are mafic intraplate mafic rocks, and, they and we have also alkaline rocks. And all of these rocks are related are concentrated, let me say, into this interval. And so soon we realized this is a, a PG thesis also, she's submitting this paper about this late to post-collisional bimodal magmatism. And it's in very important. It's a very important part of this orogenic cycle. And, and so let me say, we have the a whole orogenic cycle. So we have the kratom, so the paleo continent, the passive margin, we have arcs, we accreted the arcs to the, to the micro continents, and then we invert the basin. And at the end, we have late to post collisional bimodal magmatism. So in fact, we have a complete orogenic cycle from the, from the coeval, the passive margin development at one side and our magmatic arc systems far from the, the paleo continents and then we have collision, and then we have late to post-collision uh, bimodal magmatism. So it's a quite modern, let me say, history for a orogenic cycle. So these are the data for these youngest rocks, okay? 2.05, 2.01, 2.08. And again, they are going, they are discordant, and they are going to the uh, new proterozoic metamorphic overprint. So we have some, we are, this is a work in progress. So we are compiling all the neodymium and strontium data. And it's very interesting to understand that we have some juvenile contributions in the, the arcs. And we have also some juvenile contribution in the, in the microcontinents, the Archean microcontinents. But of course, we have this late to post-collision magmatic uh, episode that is we working this Archean uh, magmatic crust. Uh, and Hickey Bruni started to work with uh, Hafinu. This is a very recent work. He published this in ge on geology, I think. And this is just to show you the, the, the magmatic art here, and uh, the sign of the signature of the magmatic arts. I put this uh, red ellipse uh, to show the, the, all the magmatic arc data that we have. We don't have much data. As I said, this is a work that in, is in progress. So uh, next year, next week, we are going to Sao Paulo to get more half a new data that is quite exciting. And this is the late to post collision magmatism, okay? That it's clearly, uh, so the, the mafic and the alkaline stuff, it's a quite juvenile. But the, the granitoid uh, paraluminous rocks are clearly derived from the Archean uh, by Piedade microcontinent. Okay, you can see this here using half new and also half new half new ratios. Uh, we started to work more with this data, 
And we started to realize, we put here a compilation using a minus five as a cut. Uh, so in red, we have more juvenile rocks and in blue, we have uh, more uh, contaminated rocks showing that we, we really have both process going on, on this, in this orogenic system. So we have juvenile accretion, but we have also some reworking. But it's quite interesting to see that the Ryacian is, and also the Sidarian, the two Sidarian peaks are uh, moments of juvenile accretion in the magmatic art systems. And of course, the late collision episode, it's more a crustal reworking. So this is something that we want to explore a bit more in our data. Here is a compilation of not only our data, but all the data in the Southern San Francisco Craton, including the Minas Passive Margin, okay, in this uh, open dots, okay, just to show you that we have both. So we have reworking of the material, uh, of the old stuff, not only the craton, but also the meta sediments derived from the craton, but we have also some juvenile component, very important in this belt. Here we compare this uh, history with the, the proposed paper of Collins, 2011, and to show that we have a, a signature that is more uh, related to some kind of internal orogenic belt when we have also some accretionary episodes, but we have also some reworking episodes inside of this huge orogenic belt. So this is a synthesis of all the, the different terrains that I talked with you. So this is Archaea, I'm not going to talk about the Archaea, but this is very interesting to, to see that we have some older stuff coming up in the magmatic art system. It started around 2.4 giga years here and here in the Minear Wax system. And then we have the huge episode of magmatic art generation around 2.2 to 2.1 giga years. Let me say that this is the huge period of magmatic art generation, including, including some moments of accretion and some moments of reworking. It's quite interesting to understand this in detail. And then we have this very important late to post collision magmatic episode in almost all the, the tectonic terrains that make up the, the orogenic, the paleoproterozoic orogenic system. This is a tectonic model uh, that we propose uh, two, two years ago. And uh, uh, we started to think about another subduction zone, zone here. So this is because we are studying more this part of the belt. It's not really easy to make this, to understand this future. So it's quite easy to understand this future, this future, but here is not easy to understand this future. And so we are working on this with this big team. So we are doing structural geology, we're doing uh, to chronology of the myonites in the future zone and try to understand better this, uh, what is the, the nature of the, the college of this Archean microcontinent through the Minero belt. So it's quite clear here. So the docking of the Minero arc through the San Francisco is quite clear here with that granulite metamorphic rocks that I showed you before. Here is not clear because we have a, a huge neoproterozoic overprint, so it's not easy to decide if we, we had already or not a suture because now we, we have a, a new proterozoic shear zone. So it's always difficult to, to retrieve uh, older information in these very deformed rocks. And this is the, what we think that is the Minas Bahia orogenic belt now. So we I'm talking, uh, we talk before uh, we talked before about this region, the southern part of the Minero belt, the Minas Bahia belt. And now uh, we try to make some correlations throughout the belt. So we correlated now the southern part with the northern part, the San Francisco northern part of the Craton. And what we realize is that we have uh, major Archean blocks 
that, that was known quite well since since long time ago. But we have also uh, a brand new that we just discovered here, the piedade that possibly connects with this uh, huge Archean block also. But we are retrieving small microcontinents, Archean microcons, microcontinents inside this new proterozoic uh, belt. The, sorry, this paleoproterozoic belt. And we try to correlate also using neodymium. Unfortunately, we don't have many half million data from the north, it's popping out, but it's quite interesting to correlate the Archean blocks in between this new proter this paleoproterozoic magmatic art systems. So it's a quite complicated uh, orogenic system uh, with a long life. So it started in the Sidarian and goes through the Orozerium, where we have the final uh, late to post collisional tectonic episodes. Uh, talking about more uh, supercontinental uh, correlations. So of course we try to correlate with Columbia supercontinent, but it's, it's interesting because the main period of uh, rock generation, it's around 1.8 giga years. But at that time, we, we, we are also formated many blocks in Brazil, many blocks of this central Archean, Central African block, let me say, San Francisco, uh, Africa, uh, we are already consolidated as a, a supercontinental mass around 2.05 giga years. That is the time of the collapse and the bimodal magnetism. So if we join this supercontinent, possibly we join this later, okay? So this is something interesting also to, to explore, okay? So what's next? Uh, we, of course, we have to keep going. So we need more UPB data. We are trying to trace more uh, bodies, more volcanic rocks, or Sidarian volcanic rocks to, under, to better understand uh, what is the contribution, Sidarian contribution, because this is of course is in the magmatic loop, but we have lots of rocks in this magmatic loops, uh, loop in the San Francisco history. We are acquiring oxygen isotopic data to best model the, the mental and the, the crustal components. We need more half in your, definitely more half in your neogym and strong suit data. And what we are trying to do now is trying to calibrate the sutures. So we are trying to understand the structural geology and the, the, the components if, if it's uh, thrusts of if they are shear zones, sub vertical shear zones and also trying to calibrate the metamorphic conditions of these paleoproterozoic sutures. Uh, we are moving also to date more the metasediments because we think that the metasediments, they tell us uh, part of the history that is not that the plutonic rocks, it's not, it's not simple to date all the plutonic rocks. So it's easy to sample this inside the, the metasediments including rutile. So we have some rutile inside this metasedimentary sequences. And I think that maybe we could retrieve some metamorphic, uh, especially in the low grade metasediment sedimentary units, maybe we could retrieve some uh, metamorphic, paleoproterozoic metamorphic information coming from rutile. And of course, at the end, we want to model to best, to better model the, the, the components, the, the crustal uh, and metal components and the crustal growth. And okay, I'm open to <laughs> suggestions after this presentation. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the invitation, it's a pleasure. Thank you, Monica, really great. So we're gonna switch to doing our discussion and question section. And you already have a couple in the chat. But just before I get to those, everybody, you're welcome to ask a question uh, out loud by either re by raising your hand with the reactions button at the bottom, and there's that raise hand button there, or you can type it into the chat and I'll read it for you. So we have a couple, I'm going to, or I had a couple. <laughs> well, I only have one, but I think someone asked a question about, uh, what is the meaning of a uh, uh, hafnium? I said hafnium uh, 
Man, I'm trying to remember it. I don't know where it went. I don't know. If... There it is. Okay. Okay. What is the meaning of an epsilon half name evolution line with a positive uh, 176 lutetium 177 half name ratio? So you are talking about this diagram or this this one? This one. Uh, it, it's the same. It's another measure to understand what is juvenile and what is more contaminated material. And so what I'm trying um, to show here. They wanted to see the first the first figure. The first the first one? I think the one. Maybe it's on. the blue, the blue line that said, yeah. Oh, the, the blue line. This is, this is the Archean a Piedade microcontinent. And maybe this is an evolution. So we can generate this crustal rocks from reworking the Piedade uh, microcontinent. But uh, anyway, for the magmatic arc period, there is before the late collision episodes, we need some juvenile input. So this is uh, it's and, and the rocks are quite uh, illustrative because all these rocks are by uh, two mica granitoids and so they clearly are slightly paraluminous rocks so they have some crustal they must be come from some crustal reworking different from the the rocks from the arc okay all right. Cool. So, yep. Uh, that one was from Cyra Lacerda. Our next one is from uh, Jean Bedard. Do any of the proposed arc systems have thick piles of basalt and andesite with the classic BADR evolution? Yes. The, the, the Minero arc, maybe, maybe in the, let, let me move to the first one. Maybe in the Minero arc, there is the most internal arc. We have more uh, mafic rocks. I didn't focus on the mafic rocks, but we have gabroic rocks and some uh, amphibolites that ha they have the same ages of the of the felsic rocks. Okay, so they are coeval in time. And in the in the other one, let me move more. Monica, that someone else asks, uh, "What is um, to re a reminder for what BADR is?" Oh, this is a normal, normal uh, magmatic calc alkaline uh, bas basalt, uh, tonalitic, uh, granitic rocks. And yes, we have. Uh, of course, I stressed the TTG, the sanukitoids, but we have normal calc alkaline rocks. So we we not we don't have only sanukitoids and TTGs. We have also normal, let me say, medium K calcaline rocks, uh, similar with modern magmatic rocks. And we have also some island arc, some mafic rocks with island arc uh, signatures with IET uh, geochemical signatures. So we have everything. And it's interesting because we, we keep going with TTGs and sanukitoids. But we have also modern style, let me say, uh, tonalite, uh, basalts, and, and uh, diorites and granodiorite rocks. So it's it's like a transition. Huh? On the basalts. What? Who published the work on the basalts and andesites? Yes, there there's people working on the basalts and andesites. Uh, it's you know it's more easy to understand or to see the volcanic rocks. In the, in the Minero arc system, because as I said before, the new Proterozoic overprint is not so strong. So you can see volcanic textures and so on. This is not possible anymore in this part of the belt because they are transformed into banded gneisses and granulites. But here you can see the volcanic signature and people from Federal University, Ciro Avila and co-workers and also Wilson Teixeira, they are working a lot in this more volcanic and metasedimentary rocks in between the plutonic bodies of the arc. Here it's, it's really difficult. It's difficult to, to see the metasediments uh, of the arc because we are in a very deep 
part of the, the crust, even though in the new proterozoic we are deep. So we are not seeing anymore the superstructure of the belt, you see? So if you want to understand this, you have to move to this part of the belt where the Brazilian overprint is lower, lower temperature and lower deformation. So you can see primary structures uh, mingling, you can see volcanic textures. So just in this part of the belt. John, you had a little more there. Did you want to say more? Are you good? No, it's okay. Uh, uh, Okay. No, uh, All right. It'd be lovely if you could send me a, a, a list of the papers I should read on that okay. subject, Monica. Thanks. No, okay. I'm, I'm going to make a list of these recent contributions because if, if you get into the book, it's old, it's 2.17. And most of these contributions are younger from 2019 to uh, until now. So I'm going to make a list and send to and send to to people that you can share, okay? Thank you. All right, David Evans, please go ahead. Thank you, Monica. Hi, Monica David. Nice, Hi, to nice to meet you. Meet you. <laughs> yeah. Um, there was an excellent presentation. Thank you. It's it's a lot of new stuff, um, especially uh, picking apart the Braziliano from the from the Paleoproterozoic. I have two questions. One is the um, the uh, about the in this slide you have the Archean San Francisco craton that's outside of the the Iron Quadrangle. It's to the west of Minero. Yes. Um, and so the question is, yeah, what is that stuff made of? And then that's my first question. And then the second one is when we think about Braziliano reworking, um, is there a general sense of shear? like dextral or sinistral that we would use to do the reconstruction of all these domains um, yes. you know, prior to the Braziliano reworking? Yes, uh, the last one is more easy. All the, all the tectonic <laughs> emergence of the new, protero, new proterozoic belts are a thrust to the north, northwest, and with the lateral dextral component. So all these this, uh, shear zones and thrusts have this lateral component. So this is the sense of tectonic vergence of this uh, Ibera belt, let me say. Here we have a bit of complication because we have the end of the Brasilia belt, the other one, the older, the older uh, Braziliano belt. And this is really interesting. So uh, part of the Mineiro arc system was inside the cradle uh, because this, uh, this cratonic uh, line was a mix between potassium argon data uh, deformation. So this is an important shear zone. And these are the trusts, the, let me say, the, the, not, uh, the trust that goes to iron quadrangle. So this is the present uh, limit of San Francisco Craton. Let me say it's a composition between ages and deformation. <coughs> and of course, we have part of the Mineiro belt that is inside the Mineiro magmatic art system that are more deformed. And it takes a long time for us to realize this. And so we, now we are moving to this part. As I show you, there's uh, rocks here are orthogonized, banded orthogonized. So they are more deformed, so it's not so easy. But you, you keep retrieving the, the, the signature of the magmatic uh, plutons. And of course, the magmatic metas and the metasedimentary units. And so this is something that we are all working on. So what's the nature of this context? You know, we don't know. We don't know. Uh, at first, as, as we got some paleoproterozoic suture here, we think, oh, okay, this is gonna be a paleoproterozoic suture. So we sampled some myelonites here. We did some apatite, and this is new proterozoic in age. And so it's not so simple as we, we pray to be. So we have to do more work to understand what, what's the nature of this contact here. It's not so clear for us, okay? If, if, if this is a suture, all the suture is here, and in fact, part of this Mineiro arc system is developed at the margin of this microcontinent. 
So this is exactly what we are working on now with these people, uh, together with people from Federal University in Rio, the Ciro Avila group, and also with Wilson Teixeira at USP. Thank you. And um, the other question is about the Archean San Francisco Craton to the west of Monero. Is, does that show any, is there any supercrustal material preserved in there at all? Um, or is it, is it, uh, and how much sort of um, Paleoproterozoic reworking of the Archean uh, in there? Now, in the Archean stuff, there is uh, just here, okay, just okay. here at the Aeropadago. This green stuff is Hilda's very super group. Right. So it's uh, Archean uh, supercrustal rocks. And of course, here we got the new proterozoic overprint, but here not. And we have lots of these in layers, this greenstone belt like in layers inside the Archean stuff. Uh, so, yes, we have uh, uh, meta sediments and meta volcanic rocks to work on. So, this is something also to explore. But those are Archean, uh, strictly Archean. Um, Archean, Archean, yeah. Archean rocks. You don't, you don't have anything like the no. stratigraphy. Okay. Yeah, from this, from this part of the Venus supergroup to the west, we just have Archean stuff. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and sorry, one more question. If I, as long as I'm not dominating for anyone. No, you're else. good. You're good, Dave. Um, uh, yeah, I just see Claudio. Hi, Claudio. Um, the Pitangi Greystone Belt. Yep. Um, how much um, uh, Paleoproterozoic reworking is there in that Archean domain? Is that is that uh, minor or is it? Do you think it's major? Well, here I think it's minor, but it, you know, <laughs> I just think because we don't have enough data. Uh, we just have this Archean uh, basement yeah. with this blade to post collisional magmatic rocks. Mm -hmm. And in some places, we have this metamorphic overprint, 2.05 overprint. But it's more easy to see this in the granulite facial suture zones. It's not easy to decide because here we have Grinch's facial metamorphic rocks at the basement. But we, it's not so easy to decide if we are dealing with the Braziliano Neoproterozoic or the Paleoproterozoic overprints. You know, it's really not easy to, to decide. It's also a region with very few outcrops. And so we are really uh, trying to get more and more data exactly from this region and exactly to this context, because I think that this context should be important to understand. And so this is why we're moving to the, in this direction. People from Federal University is getting south and we are getting north. So we, we are trying to make this together. Thank you. This is awesome. Look forward to more work. Okay, thank you. All right. Maybe Andre is ready? Yeah, uh, Monica, great uh, presentation. I have two uh, questions. Maybe I suspect you might not have an uh, answer for uh, for them, but I'm interested uh, about your thinking. So first question, kind of more general. Uh, so uh, there are paleoproterozoic origins that you trace from Minero to Bahia, uh, the same age. Uh, but if you look into Archean his history, Archean history of Minero, uh, Minas Gerais and in Bahia, quite different. And so I'm wondering uh, what is the time uh, when was collision and assembly of this uh, proto uh, South Francisco Craton, um, sort of presumably in late Archean, uh, before Paleoproterozoic origins can later accrete against it? So that's the first question, and maybe I'll let you answer. Yes. Maybe I'm going to move to this one of the last slides. It, it's it's not easy huh? because uh, at the middle of San Francisco Craton we have this bamboo cover, you know, yeah. and this part here is completely covered, and so people is starting to study some in layers here. Uh, people from the companies they are starting to to get some samples from drills, drilling drilling samples, 
And so they are trying to find also some paleoproterozoic stuff. So maybe you were right. So maybe they, they were disconnected and they, they are just connected here by another branch of a paleoproterozoic belt. But again, it's really difficult because of this uh, new proterozoic cover, you know? You need more indirect data or some drilling from so, some company to, to get some samples of this. Thank you. And the second question about uh, Pidade. Uh, so, um, so in Pidade, you have Archean part, which uh, if I got it correctly, around 2.6, maybe 2.7. Okay. And you have similar ages, like, for example, Pitangui, uh, Greenstone Belt in uh, Minas Sheras. So I'm wondering what I, uh, it's actually two uh, sort of related question. W what is your thinking? Could be uh, Pidade separated at some point from uh, Minas Sheras? And second question, um, uh, when this separation could have happened because uh, you have late Archean 2.6 orogenic event in Pidade, maybe in Minas Sheras as well. And when you have what you infer arc magmatism at 2.45 on Pidade. So, so it must be some rifting uh, sometime between, maybe it's your 2.5 alkaline uh, basalts, but what are your thoughts about it? Well, this is a very good question. <laughs> so it's possible. It's possible that uh, it belongs to a major Archean micro uh, continent, and then it was separated because we should open an ocean to have the Minas passive margin, you know? And we have island uh, any more have rocks of 2.4 giga years also. Once just one sample. That's the same age of the Gandarela and the beef formations. So yes, we must have an ocean separating these two microcontinents. Uh, my feeling is that the, the Piedade, I don't know if the Enrique, Enrique is sitting just <laughs> close to me, uh, but I think that uh, in, the, in the Western part of San Francisco Craton, we have all the old stuff popping out, including old data, 3.6 and even, even older. And we don't have this signature until now in the Piedade block, but it could be a matter of sampling, you know? We don't know. We just, uh, in this Piedade Archean block, we just have the youngest part of the history that is preserved in San Francisco uh, Creighton also. The two point, let me say 75 to 2.6 giga years. But again, I don't know, maybe we have more data we have some older TDM. We have some older inherited uh, zircon grains. So maybe we could retrieve doing more work of this oldest uh, evolution of the Piedade microcontinent. Talking about isotopes, and he is teasing me <laughs> here. Uh, it's a bit. It's a. It's different. So Piedade block has a different signature from the San Francisco Archean complexes. And so this is what we are working, putting together neodymium, strontium, and hafnium to better compare, and now oxygen also, to better compare uh, these two Archean blocks. But again, it's, I don't know. Okay. I, I won't make a bet, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and last quick question with 2.5, okay. uh... Uh, date for alkaline basalt, is it a good age? And with yes. alkaline basalts, uh, could they be rift related? If you could say a few words. Okay, it's, it's a dike, it's a kind of deformed dike and it's okay. a good age. So okay. maybe, yes, it could it could mark some, the beginning, uh, maybe no? the beginning of this rifting phase that go apart the these two or more Archean blocks. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, this this the the solution of this uh, it's not quite. Uh, we don't have good outcrops, you know, in this part between the the southern Piedade block and the Mineiro uh, arc. So this is why we are trying to make detailed mapping of this 
uh, we are putting field work of students there. So we're trying to get more data to understand this. It's... Thank you. Uh, yeah, look right. forward to hear more at, uh, as you progress. Okay, so at the moment, there aren't any more questions in the chat or hands up. Would anybody like to speak up uh, and talk about anything? Okay. Well, thanks, Monica. It seems like this was really good talking. There was a really good uh, discussion at the end. So thanks so much for presenting for us today. Oh, it and, was uh, really cool. I really enjoy it. Thank you. And uh, uh, happy holidays to everyone. We kind of stop early because uh, Alex and I will be traveling in Mexico and uh, in Egypt, uh, but we have already beat the schedule for uh, next year up to, uh, so we have already scheduled up to may and uh, so we look forward to see you next year yes yep hope it's all see right you. happy holidays everyone yes happy holidays i hope to see you in brazil next year huh maybe yeah. uh, on may maybe we can go and visit the paleo proterozoic belt why not it's an yeah. invitation <laughs> thank you thank you monica Thank you. All right. Take care, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Take care, everyone.